Hello, everybody. Welcome to Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Dean Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is November 5th. It is Election Day. Why are you listening to this podcast unless you're in line to vote or you've already voted? Hold on. There's a lot of energy stories out there. First one coming around the corner. Trudeau to order oil and gas producers to cut emissions by 35%. Holy smokes. South Korea weighs buying more USA energy if Trump wins election. There's a lot more to that story. Energy Talon, Constellation, and Vistra tumble after government rejects Amazon Nuclear Data Center Agreement. Didn't see this one coming. I thought everybody would be all happy about it. Storm Raphael may menace oil and gas production in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a weather watch. Buckle up and hang on. Before I get started, I hope everybody has either voted or is in line to vote. Your pocketbooks do depend on it. Trudeau to order oil and gas producers to cut emissions by 35%. This is just nuts. Industry limit to be implemented through cap and trade system. The Canada cap and trade system and the carbon tax that they have is nothing more than a wealth transfer and just a total sham for them to be using. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government will require Canada's oil and gas industry to cut emissions by 35% from 2019 levels, inflaming tensions with the country's western province. The western province pays a lot of funds to the east, so in funds derived from their energy policies, uh, their energy production, and I can't believe that they're doing this. We're asking the oil and gas sector to invest their record profits into pollution cutting projects, projects that create jobs and good clean jobs. The way that they're doing it is not going to work. We will not stand idly while the federal government sacrifices our prosperity, our constitution, our quality of life for its extreme agenda, she said in a joint energy Alberta Premier Danielle Smith, whose province is the home of Canada's oil sands, her government was exploring every legal option to challenge the crap, which she says will significantly curtail production. Hats off to Danielle Smith, and uh, I'm going to reach out to her to see if I can get her on the podcast and uh, do an interview with her. She's got to fight for her Albertans and just keep that fight going. So we'll keep you posted if we can get her on the podcast. South Korea weighs buying more USI energy if Trump wins the election. A key area under the scrutiny is South Korea's increasing trade surplus with the U with America. The South Korean government may urge companies to boost their purchases of U.S. oil and gas if the trade imbalance becomes a sticking point in a Trump presidency, which we know it may. So when you take a look at either car imports, are they going to buy oil in trade? I think that'd be pretty interesting. I think it's fantastic that countries are looking at our elections, and this is very important. Who do you want to do business with? a energy positive country or an energy negative country. The Biden-Harris policies on the bans on LNG should tell you exactly what you need to know to have a fair trade agreement going on. Let's go to Energy Talon, Constellation, and Vistra tumble after government rejects Amazon Nuclear Data Center Agreement. This is pretty amazing. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission on Friday rejected a request to increase the amount of the power at the uh, Sequana nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania so in a, it, on the Amazon data center campus. Independent producer Talon Energy in March sold the data center to Amazon for $650 million. Uh, Talon stock fell more than 5%. 
the grid operator PGM interconnection and the Sequoia plant, uh, Sequoia Nana plant, which Talon owns, filed a request to increase the amount uh, dispatched on Amazon data center from 300 megawatts to currently to 480 megawatts. The arrangement called co-location co-location by power industry could have huge ramifications of both grid reliability and consumers cost. I said the FERC commissioner Mark Christie in his opinion backing the order. I don't trust anything that they do over there in the energy department in the FERC based on the decisions that they've made and the lack of ability of having industry experts. I'm questioning why I'll see if I can do some digging around and uh, find out and get back to you on this as well. Storm Raphael may menace oil and gas production in the Gulf of Mexico weather watch. We're seeing an increase in the oil and gas prices right now simply because of OPEC Plus's decision to cut production for a bit. And at the time of this recording, oil prices were up $2.16 today at $71.65, and Brent was at $75.25. And so this storm could mean a little bit more, depending on how uh, wide. Over the next few days, the system is expected to dump heavy rain across Jamaica, Cuba, before drenching parts of Florida and the Gulf Coast. If it heads over to the Florida side, it won't have nearly the impact if it's going up through more of the Louisiana side. It'll be the 17th storm of the six-month Atlantic season, which has seen five hurricane strikes the U.S. already. That's nuts. Anyway, I hate for everyone watching election coverage tomorrow. I don't trust the mainstream media, nor do I trust the government, if you can imagine that. I would actually recommend going to DecisionUSAOnline.com. Again, that's DecisionUSAOnline.com. Uh, you've got uh, Larry Schweiker on there. He is a, a very well-known author. You're going to have General Flynn. And you're going to have lots of other folks. I think... Thoroughly enjoyed getting to interview and, and visit with uh, Larry on David's podcast, David Blackman's podcast, and we had an absolute blast talking politics. He has predicted that the election will turn out, that Trump will win at the 312 mark for the Electoral College. I'm sure hoping he's right. Larry is a sharp cat, and uh, get over there and follow Decision USA online.com and uh, that way you don't have to watch the mainstream media in the meantime buckle up keep your head on a swivel if you are looking for investment we have partnered with pecos operating and uh, go to the website it'll be in the show notes take a look there's a survey is oil and gas the right investment for you and uh, just fill that survey out and we'll get that information right on over to you thanks and have an absolutely wonderful day and I sure hope that you voted. And uh, I'll tell you, I think you know who I'm voting for. But hey, get out and have an absolute wonderful day. See you.